to, to see what they are seeing here, it's totally repugnant. These are patriotic, God-fearing soldiers who have sworn allegiance to the Constitution and Bill of Rights. They take their oath most seriously. For a foreign soldier to lay boot upon American soil is the ultimate of sacrilege. To do it like they did at Waco on the 19th of April, the anniversary of Lexington Concord, was a slap, not a shot heard around the world. It was a terrible sin against this document because it was the full force of part of the British Empire returning to kill American citizens on our soil. And, common law, and, and not common law that prevailed, but that rag that we had in here Forgive me, it was an American flag, but it had been besmirched because of that gold trim that was on it. That is not my flag. I bend no knee to any crown, to any king, to any queen, no monarch, no position of authority that claims any title of nobility. And for you to do so is a great sin. Boy, Mark, that's awfully heavy. Yes. Yeah. We talked about this today. I was on a phone conversation with a friend of mine who works in, a, in the next building. And he goes, and I, I asked him this, I said, can you imagine if we had the Founding Fathers for 24 hours alive right now? Could you imagine the Founding Fathers standing? Or as Jefferson said, pull out your pistols and fire and reload. And I'd like to have Jefferson standing here right now. Because he always said, Keep your pistols close to your breast. And he didn't mean home in the closet. Yeah, cocked and locked and ready to go. And that's what we failed in. Okay, I'm going to take some questions real quickly. The gentleman here has been very patient, so I'm going to ask him, please. of the markers, we have pictures here tonight. And in fact, if we could, there's a packet back with my briefcase that has duplicates of the original color photos taken out of Indiana where patriots had already done some work. That When these stickers showed up on the oncoming signs, the backs of oncoming traffic signs, they showed up all at once throughout different parts of the state. Uh, Michigan Department of Transportation. Okay, now these, now what they, what happened is these stickers, originally most people would look at them and go, ah, kids are, there's some vandals out there, some kids. The stickers are approximately half the size of this, this packet right here. They are in base, three basic colors, but there are other colors that are used. Red, green, and blue. I'm sorry, yes, red, green, and blue. Yellow is also used, and we're finding some other off colors that are used. In Indiana, the mar roads are now more effectively marked with numbers and a color sticker. The numbers denote priority, but what we can interpret, of targets along these particular roads. A higher number denotes a, an industrial base site of some type, like a factory, a stamping plant, or whatever. High numbers also indicate all grain elevators and mills. Low numbers, such as zero or one, indicate, for instance, dirt county roads or private domiciles. Now, how would this work, people ask? Well, what would you put these stickers on here for? Well, I'm Comrade Kalunovich, and I'm with the 16th Guards Tanks Army, and I've been brought into the United Nations Authority in my little black uniform. I speak about 10 light words in English, but I've been well conditioned to understand what colors mean. I have my three five-ton trucks. I have been going with my long list built up by, of course, the U.S. Directorate of Central Law Enforcement. Under Gore's re reorganization plan, the Directorate for Central Law Enforcement is the CIA, FBI, DEA, ATF, federal marshals, and everybody else in one KGB, I mean National Police Force. Yeah. Learn the three letters most important because KGB will change too. Just a minute. The, the thing that I can see about this is Comrade uh, Kalunovich goes, oh, gee, okay, we pick up this guy. Okay, we got 40 people in this truck. He picks up his handy-dandy uh, uh, communications link and goes, 
root, north, and then he gives a mile marker because there's a mile marker indicator. Red route, pick up, one truck, red smoke. Goes over to the side of the road, pops his red smoke, throws it out. A Chinook or a heavy lift helicopter comes in, lands, picks up the accumulated prisoners, and there's no threat of those prisoners ever being recovered because they go directly into the camps and land. That's the easiest way to do it. Now, what appeared in most of Indiana, Indiana and is in almost every small and large town now is a marker at the center of town, which is about so. In fact, it's the size of this, blue and white. There's a zero on it. As you go north, south, east, or west, the mile markers are there. One mile no north or south or east or west route. These would indicate, as with ground zero, specific control areas, how to grid off the local area under your control if you were a regional military commander or with the guard under the MJTF or with foreign forces under FinCEN. And the markers are not in Indiana now. They're not only in Indiana. They're in Michigan, they're in Ohio, and they're in virtually every state in Region 5, which is what you're in right now. Yes? rifles taken? I did. Did you watch them beg not to have the pump shotguns taken? I did on C-SPAN. Did anybody watch them beg not to have the demilitarized weapons taken? In other words, weapons that aren't even functional? I did. They asked for, a, for resolutions to exempt all of these arms. What does that tell you? That tells you that in the crime bill they asked for the whole house and you only gave them half. So we don't know what they gave them. The crime bill is written like the, like, the, like the National Death Sentence Plan and is written the same as NAFTA. It, in fact, is, a, is an exact, we said this before, remember California is the litmus for what they would do to the United States? Well, for anybody who doesn't remember what they did in California, everybody thought they'd make a deal. But the state's attorney general has the authority to ban any weapon at her or his discretion. What happened is they went for the house. We want a hundred and some weapons banned. Oh, God, don't take my gun. Take that son of a bugger over there. Take his gun. And everybody said, oh, okay, yeah, well, we won't take your gun. We'll take his. You just go along with what we say. And you know what? They were stupid enough to do it. And 48 hours after they passed the law, Every weapon that they took off the list was right back on the list. A deal only exists when there are two sides. Apology accepted, Captain. Yes? Pass them around, please. We don't have a whole lot of time. Um, we've had people go and follow the roads. We have Patriot elements, of course, all through the country. We spread the word and ask them to take a tally of where and what roads are affected. Now, we had people at the last meeting who have already gone through that area and went through the roads specifically to identify them. I will say this. Remember, excuse me, we think that some of these markers are they do not necessarily affect the whole road. Some of the markers right now are simply for either daylight or night observation to mark how to get on the ground